also known as Jessica Chelston. Um, Jessica Chelston is the designer name I came up with about 12 years ago when I started designing wedding dresses. And at the time, it was quite important to me that my business name was also a version of myself, but also the name of a person, because it seemed like a lot of other bridal designers were using their names or a version of their name. So now, Jessica Charleston really kind of encompasses about half of what I do in work um, and in my everyday life. Um, so I design and make wedding dresses still. I work as a freelance pattern cutter and seamstress. I teach pattern cutting and sewing, and that's something that I'm doing more and more of. Um, and then I also work in care. I work with young people. I'm a massage therapist, and I'm about to start training to become an art psychotherapist. But you don't need to know too much about all of those things. <laughs> I guess for the purposes of today, a kind of umbrella term would be creative entrepreneur. It kind of, it, it's probably a better way of describing me than a busy person who does lots of different stuff. Um, so. I've got three Instagram accounts, three Facebook pages, <laughs> two LinkedIn profiles, which I don't really use, by the way, uh, a dormant Twitter account, and a confused Pinterest account. <laughs> um, the Instagram accounts I do actually keep up with. Facebook I'm not such a fan of, but yeah, that sort of illustrates <clears throat> the, how I, well, where I am and the kind of journey that I'm on. But if you want to find me, Instagram is probably your best bet. <laughs> and the one that I engage with most, because it's the most visual. Um, OK, so you might be wondering how this relates to the topic of news. Obviously, as a designer, I'm always looking for inspiration. Um, and I guess generally I think of a muse as a person, but actually a muse can be anything that sparks your creativity. So I started to look at it more as a sort of more value-based concept of things that inspire me and that, that sort of dictate the way I live my life. And I'll talk a bit more about that later. Um, but first of all, I'd like to play a little game with you. Um, how many of you know heads, bodies and legs? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> There's a little messaging there. Um, okay, I'm going to do all of this paper. I don't really think of myself as a fashion designer. I guess I chose to design wedding dresses because I felt like it would give me the most creative freedom. Um, and I kind of bypassed the fashion industry because I didn't really want to, I didn't really want to get involved with it. Um, and I guess I like the industry even less since I've learned more about the impact it's having and fast fashion and the people's inexhaustible appetite to consume cheap garments. So I'm trying to encourage people to make their own a lot more. Um, and thinking about things that we can do to help. So slow fashion is, is the antidote obviously, to fast fashion. Fast fashion really only came about in the 60s with Bieber uh, when they started mass producing garments and suddenly they were affordable. So it's not that long ago that people were making most of their clothes themselves. I know my mum made a lot of her clothes when she was growing up, and actually it's because of her that I learned to sew and then started making my own. Um, and much later, actually went into making a living doing it. Um, so what are the other things that we can do? We can buy less, for a start. We can try and buy nothing new. Uh, we can recycle old clothes. I very rarely throw things away. I've got a pair of trousers that I bought about 10 years ago and I've had them scrawled away somewhere and I started wearing them again recently, which is quite fun. Uh, we can repair things. So I'm also trying to do repair workshops at the moment. Um, and visible mending is, is a bit of a thing. Sashiko, which is a Japanese technique. So you actually make the mending 
aesthetically part of the garment and it sort of gives it new life. I heard a really interesting talk the other day. Um, there's a fashion psychologist, Carolyn Mayer, who talks about giving symbolic meaning to your clothes. So her example was lucky pants. So if you give that meaning to something, you're more likely to hang on to it for longer. So equally, if you've put lots of energy into making it, you're probably going to value it more. Um, so yeah, fashion, giving our, giving our clothes narrative is a good way of, of valuing them more. And that's a really important message, I think. So I've come to the realisation that my creativity, I think, is... is I mean, it's still aesthetically important, but it's less about aesthetics and more about being a considerate human and caring about the environment and having good mental health. Um, mental health is a big one, so I'm about to start training as a, an art psychotherapist, and I think I reached a point where I was working far too hard um, and not really getting the work-life balance thing at all. So I'm really careful now to make sure that that's kind of in view is everything that I do. So I've come up with a few, oh, I should have moved the slides on as I was talking about the amount of water that we use. Uh, drought. <laughs> <laughs> Fabric, lots <coughs> of it. And making your own clothes. So that's something that I'm encouraging everyone to do. So yeah, I've come up with my sort of value-based muses, if you like. Um, fun. It's really important to have fun when you're being creative and to be playful and to not sort of lose sight of, of what really drives you. I think when you're, when you're trying to make money out of what you do, it's really easy to get lost in it sometimes and not really enjoy it anymore. This is a little collage I did recently. I started doing collage because I thought, why not? And I started doing art for the sake of art, and it's great, and I'm really enjoying it. So, um, fun is really important to me. Sleep is really important. Can sleep be a muse? I think if we don't get enough sleep, we kind of, we kind of run out of inspiration, don't we? We're kind of not really excited about life very much at all. So sleep's something that, in the last year, since I sort of went back to being fully self-employed, something that I've been doing lots of. Uh, and this is a brilliant book. If you haven't read it, I highly recommend it. It's fascinating. Um, I used to do, I used to pull all-nighters all the time uh, and miss out on sleep quite frequently and it really didn't have a good effect. So get lots of sleep and you'll have loads of great ideas. You probably also feel that sometimes you're not sleeping and having great ideas in the middle of the night, which frequently happens. But I'm sure you all know about that. <laughs> um, variety. So one of the great things about being self-employed. How many of you are self-employed? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, how many of you have more than one job? Okay. <laughs> so yeah, variety. I really like variety. And one of the things I really like about being self-employed is that I can kind of do lots of different jobs and coming away from being a full-time wedding dress designer I get to do things like this um, this is working with a client who is working on putting uh, electronics into yarns so nanotechnology this was kind of a, a project to show what the yarns could do but she's actually using them more in a healthcare setting um, so this is a collaboration between a few different people um, and that was really fun to do. It was really good to work in red rather than versions of white and off-white. Um, at the moment, I'm also working on... Uh, well, a nun came to me uh, a few weeks ago and asked me if I could make some habits for her. So I've never been approached by a nun before. So I'm getting to do lots of different things, which is great. Uh, another of my... Oh, yeah. Another of my uh, values, which is important, is freedom. And again, it's... It's really great to be to have the freedom to choose what I do, uh, the jobs that I take on, and how I use my time, and making sure that I have time to to play as well as to work. Um, you might wonder why this picture of the Great Wall of China. When I thought of freedom, for some reason, this popped into my head. When I was 19, I went 
travelling around the world, and my first stop was China, and I'd always wanted to go to the Great Wall of China, and I just remember having this sense of freedom. Now I'm on the other side of the world, and I can do whatever I want. <laughs> um, kindness is really important. So this is a, what looks like a very messy table. Um, it's a workshop, uh, and we're playing with fabric. It was a workshop that I did with kids. Um, exploring just little fabric manipulation skills and that kind of thing. So this is sort of the art therapy connection. So using, using art and textiles particularly are really good in a therapeutic setting because they're very tactile. So just encouraging people to explore their creativity and not really have any brief and just have a bit of a play. Um, authenticity and honesty. This dress is actually called Honesty, which is why I put the picture up there. That's really important to me. Um, I think for a long time I felt like Jessica Charleston had to be a particular way and had to have a certain image and, and had to uh, address people in a certain way. Um, over time I realised more and more that, that, that I just had to be myself and that that was the most effective way of doing business. So if my hair's a mess, please don't judge me. Because uh, <laughs> I care a lot less than I used to. <laughs> um, and finally, sharing is really important to me. So uh, this is, these are a couple of my students learning pattern cutting. Um, sharing skills that I've learned. I also really enjoy sort of doing skills exchanges with people. Um, so I do a number of different workshops from sort of basic pattern cutting and sewing skills to making a particular garment. So next week I'm doing a make your own coat course. Um, and I really enjoy that as well. I'd also really like to get men sewing. There aren't very men, many men here, but uh, if you know of any men who would like to learn to sew, point them in my direction, because I think more men should be sewing. <laughs> uh, so that's it. Those are my thoughts on Muse, my musing on Muse, uh, and these are my contact details, my website, my email, and my Instagram account, if you want to find me. Thank you so much for explaining all Thank that, you. uh, your work, and, and it's really fascinating to me, because you're very inspiring, you just, uh, on digital, because you're doing so many things. And uh, I, I, I would love to be able to, 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 you know, to do more pattern cutting. You, so, yeah. so I'll tell you a question. Uh, Jessica told me, and I, I started with pattern cutting, <laughs> knowing n nothing at all. Yeah. So I know I didn't have a sewing no, background, did you? No, not at all. But, but you, get me, you got me going into, uh, even if I didn't know anything, you start, you just triggered something. And now I have kind of an idea, so I want yeah. to know more. So I know you do kimonos, coats. Uh, but many, you actually designed for me as well, so thank you so much again. Thank you, Jessica. Thank you.